Hello there and welcome back to some more Forza to Top Gear Laps. Today we are taking a look at some classic Grand Touring cars. We begin with the 1953 Maserati A6 GCS-53 Berliner. 170 horsepower, 135 foot-pound of torque, 1,984 pounds of weight. This is the least powerful car here today, the least torquey car here today, and the lightest car here today, mostly because this one is slightly less of a Grand Tourer and more of an actual race car slash Grand Tourer thing. Uh, this is one of the cars that sort of cheats the rules, I guess, when it comes to today's episode, but we'll ignore that. Um, yeah, this is a rather strange looking car, it has to be said. Um, it's sort of got a weird concave front end, almost like a modern day Morgan does. Um, yeah, very strange car, always looks surprised, which is amusing to me. Um, yeah, I'm not... You know, these sort of classic -y 1950s cars, they don't really do a whole lot for me, I've got to be honest. Uh, in terms of, you know, the way they look and how I feel about them. Um, but, you know, it's kind of cool to drive some cars that are, you know, 60, 70, 80 years old in this game. As far as it goes to drive, um, it is pretty decent. Um, it does have a very long first gear, which again is sort of in line with this being more of a race car than anything else. Um, it is on, slightly on the soft side, suspension-wise, but you'd expect that from a 1953 car. Um, and to be fair, for a 1953 car, it actually does drive surprisingly modern. Um, you know, you could really mistake this for a 70s or an 80s car, to be all honest with you. Uh, yeah, a surprisingly okay car, certainly. I can't really complain that much about the A6 GCS, other than that name being ridiculous. Next up, we have the 1960 Aston Martin DB4 Zagato, 314 horsepower, 278 foot-pound torque, 2,701 pounds of weight. Certainly one of the most beautiful cars here in Forza Motorsport 7. I love uh, the DB4 Zagato. I think it's an absolutely terrific looking car. In fact, if you ask me, I think this is better looking uh, than the DB5. Of course, we have had the DB5 go around the track before. So it'll be interesting to see sort of how these two cars uh, match up to each other. In terms of statistics, they are both actually relatively similar, you know, low 300 horsepowers. Um, although the DB4 Segato is significantly lighter. In fact, this car's a lot lighter than I was expecting it to be, 2,701 pounds. Uh, isn't that much weight, as it turns out. Uh, speaking of surprising, though, uh, another thing that sort of surprised me is just how quick this car is. It actually does feel really very fast, sort of slightly hampered by the fact that it does have a long gear ratio gearbox. You do sort of expect it with these older cars. I mean, Grand Tour is in general, they do have longer gears just so you, because you're supposed to rev them out a little bit longer, they're supposed to get slightly better fuel economy than your supercars and stuff like that. It is very much on the soft side, which you do sort of expect uh, from an Aston Martin, you know. Again, it is supposed to be a little bit more comfortable, it's supposed to be a little bit more civilised, and uh, it certainly does achieve on that. Um, yeah, I do like the DB4 Zagato. Uh, to be fair, if it drove like arse, I'd appreciate it because of the way it looks. And speaking of good looking cars, next up we have the 1962 Ferrari 250 GT Berlinetta Lusso. 254 horsepower, 215 foot pound torque, 2,425 pounds of weight. Another absolutely stunning looking car. I really like the 250 GT Berlinetta, especially that rear end. For some reason, I know it looks basic, uh, but I really do like it. Um, yeah, I do like the 250 GT Berlinetta in general. This car introduced in Forza Horizon 2, of course. Um, this is another car like the DB4 Zagato, uh, where it is actually a lot lighter than I was expecting it to be. 2,425 pounds. This thing weighs just over a ton, um, which is pretty incredible when you consider, you know, this is a front-engine V12 Ferrari. Um, you know, a modern-day version of this car, say, uh, 599s and stuff like that, they weigh close to 4,000 pounds, so it is pretty incredible. Then again, they do have well over double the power of this car. As far as it goes to drive, this is another car I'd describe as being surprisingly fast. Faster than you'd expect it to be. The rear end is very loose on it, though. Um, this was a problem I was sort of expecting quite a lot of cars here today, because we have somewhat high-powered cars with rear-wheel drive. So they are naturally going to be a bit more slidey, and the 250, uh, yeah, you can sort of see it. It really does like to swing its back end out. It's also on the softer side, you can sort of see it flexing uh, through the corners. But overall, a fairly decent car to drive. Next up, we have the 1969 Fiat Dino 2.4 Coupe, 180 horsepower, 159 foot-pound torque, 3,086 pounds of weight. 
a bit of an interesting choice here in terms of power to weight ratio. Uh, I believe it's one of the least sort of in that regard cars here today. Uh, there might be a couple of other cars that sort of rival it. Um, but it's not particularly powerful and it is a little bit on the heavy side. Um, I do quite like the Fiat Dino though, of course as you should know if you've been on this channel for a long time, I'm a huge Fiat fan. And uh, this thing's a really good looking car. It sort of kind of looks like a Jensen Interceptor, just a bit less. So um, yeah, it's a pretty cool car. Certainly the Fiat Dino has been around since Forza Motorsport 6, I believe. It did actually go around the Top Gear track uh, back in Season 3, I think. So, uh, yeah, and that is some a bit of trivia for you. You can also see it's rather soft, and it does like to have a little bit of an understeer. Um, and that is just, in general, how it drives. It is a very soft car. Uh, maybe softer than you'd expect it to be. Um, then again, I guess this is supposed to be sort of one of the less performance oriented Grand Tourers we have here today. Uh, I mean, it only does have 180 horsepower. It is on the slower side, as you'd expect, compared to everything else here today. Um, but again, you'd sort of expect that. You know, you're never going to get a great handling car from this thing, although it is quite comical to see it sort of go through the corners. Um, you can see it almost lifting the back wheel up through some of the corners. Yeah, uh, a very soft, very slow car, uh, but it does look cool, so we have to give it a pass. Next up, we have the 1977 Aston Martin V8 Vantage, 380 horsepower, 380 foot-pound torque, 3,803 pounds of weight. This is the most powerful car here today, and it is also the highest torqued car here today. Um, yeah, the V8 Vantage, uh, we go from several good-looking cars to a car I really don't like the look of. It kind of looks like a Mustang too. Um, it also doesn't sound particularly good. Um, I mean, it sounds individual, I will certainly give it that, but... Um, yeah, as far as actually being a good sounding car and a good looking car, it's a no in my opinion. I'll, I do see a lot of people who do like sort of this era of Aston Martin when they sort of started making cars that look more like muscle cars. You've got this V8 Vantage and of course the uh, the V8 Vantage V600, which also looks very muscular and butch, but uh, personally I'm not a huge fan. I much prefer the cars they sort of started designing from 2003 onwards till, until recently because they've messed up the styling again recently. Um, as far as this car goes to drive, it is a little bit strange. I can't really explain what I mean by that, you have to go out and drive it, but it is a weird driving car. It is pretty fast, not quite as quick as you'd expect it to be. You know, having almost 400 horsepower, I was expecting this to be easily the quickest car in a straight line here today. But, uh, I wouldn't say it was, you know, I'd say maybe the DB4 Zagato might actually have the edge in terms of overall straight line performance. It is still quick, but it's not quite as quick as you expect it to be, which is interesting. Next up, oh, we have the 1986 BMW M635 CSI, 282 horsepower, 251 foot-pound torque, 3,329 pounds of weight. The first ever normal M car, of course, after the M1. This thing basically has the BMW M1's engine, which has been slightly modified. Uh, put in it, and of course it is a Grand Tour, and later they'd make uh, the saloon version of this car, which is the 5 Series. They'd give that the BMW M1 engine, again the same engine that's in this, and it would become the M5, and that would start the whole M car train rolling that we know today. Uh, I do quite like the M635, I'm more a fan of the saloons, uh, I'm not a huge BMW fan in general. Uh, but I think I prefer sort of the M5 Saloon of this era over the 635, but it is still a pretty good looking car. As far as it goes to drive, it is one of the better driving cars here today. It's very sharp, very pinpoint, uh, which I wasn't really expecting. I was expecting this car to be a lot like the rest of them, where they're a little bit sort of wayward and so on. I guess we are getting into sort of 80s when they really did figure out how to make cars handle. Uh, but it is very sharp. It is very slidey, uh, which you do expect from BMWs. BMWs are characteristically uh, slidey in Forza Motorsport, of course. They're great drift cars for that reason. Um, it's an okay car to drive, certainly. I don't think I'd drive it by choice, uh, but it is pretty good. And it's certainly damn so better than this. This is the 1990, uh, 1990 Jaguar XJS V12, 299 horsepower, 318 foot pound torque, 3,968 pounds of weight. This is, unsurprisingly, the heaviest car here today. Yes, the Jaguar XJS, an old friend of mine from the previous motorsport games. I don't get along with this car very well. Now, I've got to admit, in real life, I don't actually mind the XJS. I think it's a reasonably okay looking car. 
Um, it is essentially, for those of you who don't know, the XJS is essentially an E-Type underneath. Uh, this car is really antiquated, and by 1990, um, yeah, it certainly was. It does have a 5.3 litre V12, which is good. However, it has a free speed gearbox, which is very long ratioed. I never got into third gear in this car. Uh, first gear goes up to 72 miles an hour, I believe, and second gear, I can't actually tell you uh, where that one ends. It is very soft, it is very slidey, it is not a good car to drive. If you sort of wanted to go ahead and make a car that's the complete opposite of how I like a car to drive, you'd end up with the Jaguar XGS. This is not a good car to drive. I don't recommend driving this car. Now, as far as maybe turning it into a race car, I guess, maybe you could get that to work, but you need to upgrade that gearbox. Um, but I don't even know if it's worth it. Just go for a car such as this, uh, one of its rivals, the 1993. Porsche 928 GCS, the final car for today, 345 horsepower, 369 foot pounds torque, 3,594 pounds of weight, the Porsche 928. Admittedly, uh, like the Jaguar XS, this was a car that was a little bit long in the tooth when this particular version was launched, of course this is the final uh, version of the 928, the GTS, a car that had been running since 1975 I believe, however, unlike the XS, it wasn't showing its age quite as badly. Uh, yeah, I do really like the 928, especially these later models. I much prefer the styling. Sort of once they got away with that, or once they got away from that weird rear end styling, just made the light a single piece cluster and stuck a bumper on it and stuff. It did look a lot better. I think this is a really good looking car. Uh, in all honesty, one of my favourite Porsches. In fact, as far as it goes to drive, it is unsurprisingly the best car to drive here today. It is, yeah, very much on the decent-ish side. It is a little bit on the soft side, which I, you know, that is a bit of an issue. Uh, but it is very quick, 345 horsepower is pretty good, and because this has got a proper ratio gearbox, uh, you can actually use that power. This might actually be the quickest car in a straight line overall. Um, yeah, and it's just the quickest car in general, highest PI, so on and so forth. Uh, it is a little bit sort of outclassing everything else here today, and it is a very good car to drive. And unsurprisingly, it was the quickest car today, going to 138th place with a 125.617, putting it in between a Golf R and an R33 Skyline, which is interesting, also beats out an X5N, McCann. It's basically on the level of your sort of mid-spec performance cars of today, which is pretty impressive considering its age. Uh, next up, we go to sort of the main contingent of cars. In 163rd place, we find the 250 a GT Lusso with 127.298. Uh, quicker than a G65, slightly slower than a Mini, which is interesting. In 167th place, we find the BMW M635 with a 127.539. Goes in between a Sierra Cosworth and a 300ZX. And in 172nd place, we find the Aston Martin V8 Vantage with a 128. 0.056, slightly slower than an RX-8 and an M3, which is interesting. Uh, yeah, a lot of these cars sort of ended up in weird places, considering the age of them. Uh, in a 209th place, we find the Aston Martin DB4 Zagato with 130.305 going in between a Clio RS and an Oldsmobile 442. Again, some more weird positioning. Interestingly enough, it is about a second up on the DB5, which I'm assuming is just down to the fact that it weighs a lot less than the DB5. In 225th place, we find the Jaguar XJS with 131.207. Actually did a lot better than I was expecting it to. Goes in between the Holden Monaro and a Volkswagen Touareg diesel. Um, yeah, I was not expecting that car to do particularly well. Slightly quicker than a Firebird as well, which sort of has the same issue as it does. And finally today, in 240th place, we find the Maserati A6 GCS with 133.357 going in between a GTI Golf and a Dodge Shelby Omni. And in 242nd place, we find the Fiat Dino Coupe with 133.711. Interestingly enough, uh, slightly quicker than a Ford Capri and a Mercedes-Benz 300 SL Gullwing, which actually... Uh, considering sort of that car's performance stats, that is actually pretty impressive, sort of getting around a bunch of cars that I sort of like it is. Anyways, thank you all very much for watching this edition of Full Stop Gear Labs, and apologies for the wait on this episode. I promise you, I promise, I promise, I promise, the next episode will be up much quicker than between this episode and the last episode. Next time, we are going to take a look at some retro Grand Tours, so join us for that. Until then, farewell. Oh, 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 oh,